Born into a destitute family in Bremen, Jezina Gottfried, lovingly called Jesh, faced the challenge of living in the shadow of her favored twin brother, Johann Tim Jr. Her parents, Jesh Margareti Tim, a seamstress, and Johann Tim, a tailor, bestowed more attention on her brother, which shaped her early life. At the age of 21, Jesh married Johann Mittenberg, a saddler in Bremen, with whom she had three children. However, their life took a dark turn when they inherited some money after Johann's father's passing. Johann's behavior deteriorated, marked by excessive drinking and gambling, and eventually, he passed away after claiming they were penniless. A few months later, Jesh encountered Michael Christoph Gottfried, a relatively wealthy wine merchant who became a significant figure in her life. Tragedy seemed to follow Jesh, as her mother, Jesh Tim, succumbed to stomach pain in May 1815, followed by the untimely passing of her own daughters and others. During this period, Germany was hit by a cholera epidemic, which inadvertently obscured some of her crimes, while she garnered a reputation as the Angel of Bremen for her apparent benevolence during the outbreak. In 1826, she sold her house to Johann and Wilhelmina Rumpf and continued to stay on as their housekeeper. Unfortunately, Wilhelmina met her demise shortly thereafter. Rumors began to circulate that illness and tragedy seemed to befall those associated with Jesh. Johann Rumpf also fell ill but grew suspicious. After analyzing his food, he discovered traces of white powder, which he took to the local chemist, Dr. Luce, who identified it as arsenic. Authorities were alerted, and Jesh, upon learning of this, fled to Hanover, where she continued her murderous spree. Among her victims were Mrs. Schmidt and her daughter in May 1827 and Frederick Klein in July of the same year. However, on her 43rd birthday, March 6, 1828, Jesh was apprehended by the authorities. The news of her arrest spread rapidly, and during her confession, she admitted to the murder of 15 people while also attempting to kill several others. The motives behind Jesh Gottfried's heinous crimes remain uncertain and subject to extensive debate. Some speculate that her childhood emotional deprivation and her pattern of behavior point to a possible case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy, a prevalent disorder among female serial killers. Jesh's victims included her parents, both of her husbands, her fiancé, and her children. Prior to her suspicions and eventual conviction, the people of Bremen held her in high regard due to her devoted nursing of the sick, leading to her being known as the Angel of Bremen until her true nature was exposed. Jesh Gottfried cunningly employed a readily available rat poison known as mouse butter during her dark deeds. This deadly mixture comprised tiny flakes of arsenic blended with animal fat. With calculated precision, she added small doses of this lethal concoction to her victims' meals. As they fell ill, Jesh assumed an outwardly benevolent, selfless, and accommodating demeanor, offering to care for them during their recovery while secretly continuing her poisoning spree. Remarkably, throughout the period of her criminal activities, Jesh managed to maintain a facade of a model citizen, highly regarded and beloved by the community. Despite the repeated losses of her suffering relatives, she appeared to attract an inexplicable cloud of misfortune. Neighbors were moved by her seemingly genuine compassion and unyielding commitment not only to her family but also to her ailing friends, endearingly referring to her as the Angel of Bremen. Jesh Gottfried narrowly escaped claiming Johann Christoph Rumpf as her twelfth victim, thanks to his vigilant suspicion. Upon discovering small white granules on the food she had prepared for him, Rumpf grew uneasy and decided to confide in his physician, Dr. Luce, who had attended to several of the earlier victims. Handing over the suspicious substance, Luce promptly identified it as arsenic and alerted the authorities. However, even before they could intervene, Gottfried had already taken the lives of two more victims and had fled to Hanover, where she was inflicting harm on her latest prey, Friedrich Klein. On the fateful night of March 6, 1828, her 43rd birthday, Jesh Gottfried was apprehended by the authorities. Following her conviction, she was sentenced to the death penalty by decapitation and publicly executed on April 21, 1831. This somber event marked the last public execution in the history of Bremen. 
To study the facial patterns of criminal women, Jesh Gottfried's death mask was created within the context of the now obsolete field of phrenology, which aimed to understand a person's character and mental attributes based on the shape and size of their skull.